how do we take these these this great script that you guys gave us and then turn it into something that we can go turn into a movie that then we can all sit around in the post and make sure is the movie we want to make. Yeah, you know, we would just say that for anybody going in to watch a screen movie, try to go in as blind as possible and don't don't ruin it for others. Like it's just such you only get to experience it for the first time once. So as directors, like how do you guys nail down those essential elements to a screen movie and, and sort of what you consider that vibe being? I think for us, it's scary first. <clears throat> So it's, it's a horror movie, it's a thriller, but almost equal to that is creating a love for the characters. And, you know, there's a lot of ways to go about that. But I think for us, it's the the, the, re the reason we still love the first Scream is because it's a great movie and everything about it is wonderful. And it was the, the meta-ness was incredible and the scares were incredible and Ghostface is fucking iconic. But at the core of it, you have Sydney and you have Gale and you have Dewey, and we get to see them kind of grow together and go through all this awful shit together. But, you know, for us, it's those characters that make it really special. So, But you have the, the, the scares, you have the iconic killer, you have these great characters. And then the, the thing that I think we love as much as all of those is that they're always fun and they're always funny. And without being like so comedy that they're <clears throat> comedies, they are fun and they are funny. And then somehow at the same time, they're really emotional. And I think for us, it's just, it's it's that grab bag of everything we love when we go to movies yeah. presented in the way that is about movies and intentionally letting you know, hey, this is a good time. Come have a good time. And I think you feel that every time you watch any of the screams. Well, I agree. I was going to say something you guys do really well is uh, the balance of charm but it never feels too, you know, over, over the top. I, you know, like I, I, I giggle, I, I clap. And also, you know, I, I fear for Dewey. And I think that's a great balance, uh, which brings me to uh, my next question for you both is the mystery of the killer, I think is one of the most important parts. This is who done it as yeah. long as it is a slasher. How do you balance avoiding suspicion on the actual killer, but in a way that it's not so obvious that you're tipping your hat? I, I think one of the things that we talk about that's, you know, I mean, I think you could say it's unique to the whodunit genre in general, but it feels like we sort of are always reminding ourselves of it when we're making a screen movie is that sort of goal of the movie is to make everyone feel guilty, not everyone feel innocent. Like that's the, the, the fun is steering hard into, no, it's this person. And no, it's this person. It's not about, it's not about innocence. It's about, it's about guilt. And, and I think because you know, six movies in the language of these movies is um, is so much. The audience is so aware that the movie is attempting to manipulate them at every turn that the second you believe one thing as an audience member, you also believe that the filmmakers know that you believe that. So they're manipulating your knowledge of them knowing that you believe it. Right. It's this sort of it's the kind of fun dialogue. It's the kind of yeah. meta dialogue of these movies that we know that you know that we know. So we're going to do the opposite thing. And even if you think we're doing the opposite thing, maybe we're actually doing the other mm -hmm. thing instead, right? It's this sort of this sort of constant dance. And I think it's part of what is so fun about these movies. It's why you say I, that they have this, they have this charm, right? There's a level of participation that they require from the audience, from the viewing experience. You kind of can't help but sit there and and like be guessing, you know, and I, I think that that's um, it's just it's 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 a texture that runs through the entire story that just gives that gives it a buoyancy that, yeah, even when it's really brutal and really fucked up and really scary, it's also just fun. Like we talk all the time about how do you make something that is about really serious things that is also simultaneously not taking itself too seriously. And mm -hmm. Scream is like the bullseye of, of that in the genre. Uh, how involved are you in breaking the story with said writers? And because this is your project you both lead, are there any non-negotiables? They do what we say. I am joking. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we, we, we actually don't hire the writers. Uh, in fact, one of the writers is the, one of the producers who hired us. Uh, the writer, <laughs> Jamie and Guy, are they're really close hmm. friends. The producers are really close friends. And we had made Ready or Not with the same group. And then they they brought us on to this, and we have a we have a really good, really um, 
it's a really safe process. We really trust each other and they do, they do, they give us a draft that we know nothing about, like nothing. And so we get to have that experience the audience has for the first time. So the first time we see, or we, re, we read Scream 6, for example, the only thing we knew was that it was set in New York. So we were able to really in real time be like, oh, I know exactly how I feel about this. And then from there, we get really involved and we're just, I mean, we're on the phone with them. We're texting them constantly. And it's its all with the same shared goal of how do we take these these this great script that you guys gave us and then turn it into something that we can go turn into a movie that then we can all sit around in the post and make sure is the movie we want to make. You know, it's just a real open, collaborative. It's it's a really wonderful relationship. I think, you know, obviously Tyler and I can speak to collaborations. We've been doing it for so many years now. And when you find people you like to collaborate with and you have a shared sensibility, it is so special. And it's so great to be able to, to, to you know, it's like a lot of times it, it's not the audience we're making things for. It's like, hmm, oh, I think is Tyler going to like this? Oh, is Jamie going to like this? Guy going to like this? Chad going to like this? Like, it's what, it just creates an environment that I think allows the fun that these movies need to have. And honestly, any movie we're making, we want it to be something fun. And I think that that, that partnership we have with Guy and Jamie uh, and the whole gang, it just, it's, it, it comes through in the movie. I think, I think that the sense of fun that hopefully comes through, a lot of it starts with that. We obviously, the secrets can't, be let out, right? That's the most important thing. I mean, people are trying to pick things from your movie way before it gets out. And if you are work, working with writers and you guys partner together, how do you keep these from leaking? How do you keep the secrets safe on set? I, you, you don't always, honestly. <laughs> you just, you try your best. I mean, there are, there are a ton of protocols and secrets that I, I think sets like this we borrow from other big other big franchise sets that also want to keep you know keep their their secret safe i mean i think at the end of the day we trust we lean on and we trust that the people who want to spoil the movie are going to find some way to do that right the people who want to ruin the experience for themselves are going to eventually have enough have enough information to be able to do that the people that want to have to go in and have the experience as blind as possible which of course is what we recommend like that's the audience that we're making the movie for people who are going to show up and be surprised in the moment watching it for the first time knowing as little as as little as possible then they can also have that experience right i i think that um i think at the end of the day and look we know that the fandom fandom is super hungry for stuff like that's we consider ourselves a part of a part of that even when guy and jamie were writing scream six like we were texting them every day like hey guys can you tell us tell us a little bit about what's happening what, what scene are you i mean you know Honestly, we have, I won't tweet it. <laughs> we have like a natural curiosity and so so we understand that but we also we also understand that delaying gratification can sometimes be the best thing and so you know, we would just say that for anybody going in to watch a screen movie, try to go in as blind as possible and don't don't ruin it for others. Like it's just such you only get to experience yeah. it for the first time once and make sure that for 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 that experience as much as as much as possible. Yeah. The, the old Jew wisdom is uh, don't be a dick. And I think that, uh, <clears throat> there that you leads go. to it. Put I got I got, I got one more before I let you guys go real quick. As a quick hypothetical. Obviously, Scream 5, Scream 6 was super successful, right? Is there any other slasher, horror, big famous franchise that if you had unlimited money, no studio interference, and carte blanche that you guys would love to dig into? Because I think we're the same age, so I believe we probably grew up in the same stuff. Unlimited money. Uh... Yeah, no interference. <laughs> I mean, nothing comes to mind for me, for you. Like, God, I, I don't know. Like we, got, I, we were we terrified. We robbing the bank. Five, so yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. I was, I'm hoping, uh, after seeing Scream, I'm hoping one day you guys will get Jason Boris. I'll be honest with you, but that's just for me, I guess. I'm something different. <laughs>